Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing marvellously well. If you hadn't already noticed, yesterday we premiered an interview with a rather wonderful Mr. Jason Joshua. If you haven't already, please go and check it out. I'm sure there'll be a link here. And why am I bringing this up? Well, because Jason has a plugin called God Particle, which he very kindly demoed for us and gave us a quick overview. And I'm going to demo it now. And after that, Matt Lang's going to demo it, and also Adam Steele. So you're going to get four different perspectives on this plugin. To me, whenever I'm watching demos of plugins, it's always interesting to see one person's perspective. But I realize that we all use the same tools, but we can dramatically use them in completely and utterly different ways. So without further ado, let's strap on. These are my headphones of choice at the moment, the Odysseys. Um, LCD exits. So let's strap them on. Before we get started, we are blessed to be able to give away three copies of this lovely plugin. So please enter down below to win one chance of one of three copies. What Eric has kindly done for me is get together a whole schnizzle ton of tracks that I produced and mixed. So these are all things I know really, really well. When I was watching Jason using the plugin, he's using it on his master bus and he's using it pretty straightforwardly. So I'm going to go through and listen to a whole bunch of mixes and see what it does. None of these are mastered. These are all just mixed bus, probably either with nothing on them or just with the SSL bus compressor on it. So a perfect opportunity to see and hear, most importantly, what the God Particle can do. So the first one, where should I go to first? I'm going to go to Hurricane. This is a song I did with Katie Laurel a while ago. It's not hip hop. It's not pop, it's not EDM. It's a retro sounding late 50s, early 60s track. So I'm gonna put it in bypass and just hear what the track sounds like. I'm gonna take it out bypass to see what default setting is gonna be like. Wow. Now, you're all saying the same thing at the moment, which I understand is that the volume difference is the biggest thing. So Sirens call us to the bring the output volume down. Bypassed. Fantastic. So what it's doing here is it's showing us what we're doing. Barely any gain reduction on the low end. A lot in the highs. I love what it's doing on the mids. Okay, so if we turn it all the way off, we're still hearing the limiter, but we're not hearing any of this EQ. Limiter's nice. Limiter more aggressively. Sounding limiter. Okay. Put it back to default. Setting. Um, just for snitch and stiggles, I'm going to take the amount to maximum. Now, 
obviously I can play with the input, so if I bring the input down, it's not going to do as much. Driving is hard. It seems to have this optimal gain that it's trying to get you to hit. You see that little green area there? That's a great indication of just make it work well. Let's play with the mid control. Wow, that's sensitive. Pretty huge. Let's go to the high. Great on the strings. Okay, so it's designed to be really straightforward, really, really easy to use. I can see that, you know, however you adjust the input will drive into the compression, well, into the gain reduction. And then the limiter is just, it's brick wall limiting, but it, it sounds really, really good. I get a feeling he's done something that like some kind of adaptive limiting, like he's letting, depending on the source material, they've got some kind of clever algorithm which is changing the attack and release times. I think probably the best way to find that out for sure just to maybe go to, let's go to something a bit more organic, like uh, Me in the City, our song, which is acoustic guitars. I think there's a mandolin on this, drums and a bass. Bypass. Input back up. It's actually driving the mids a little bit too hard. Pull up the guidelines, so I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. I'm going to bring the overall amount down. Bypass it. That's fantastic. So immediately I put it on, it was like a huge difference, but too much for me. I brought it down so it wasn't quite so aggressive, and suddenly it's music to my ears. This is going to be an interesting one. I wonder if people are going to mix into this. I brought the mids down a little bit. I brought the overall amount down, and I love what it's doing. Is this going to be something that people are mixing into? Um, I know Matt Lang's been using it a lot. All right, let's listen to Steve McGora's Whiskey. Insatiable. So take Bypass. Me down again. Morning screaming, don't pretend. Want to hear my name? Oh, I love the way the ambience is coming up. Just lose yourself with me and tell me what you want to do. And we'll dance along the satin till the morning. I can only hope that what you see is you and me. It's really helping differentiate the kick and the bass guitar from each other, isn't it? It's before. Put it on now. Gonna tear you down so hard. Ooh. Be calling now for what is doing the kick? He's gonna let you know. He's looking down and just keep. Okay, I'm supremely skeptical of uh, you know leave it on the master bus solves all your problem kind of plugins. You're talking to a man or you're listening to a man that has grown up, you know, coveting SSL consoles and 4,000 bus compressors and uh, Poltec EQs and stuff like that. And I'm still not a fan of like mixing into tons and tons of plugins. If you see any of my in the box mixes that I've streamed live, I don't even put anything on the master bus till the very end after I've mixed the song to within an inch of its life. This, I think, used sparingly could probably be pretty darn huge. 
I know a lot of time and effort went into this from all of the investigations I've done. I think the limiter alone might be worth the price of the entry. Let's just use the limiter. Let's go to the Jonas Smith track. So this one's gonna be really interesting because this song is a live off the floor, live bass, live drums, live piano, and live vocal, all recorded simultaneously. Couldn't find my way home. Bye, past. My mind won't leave me alone. I feel like it's shifted the low boost up ever so slightly. So it's more punchy, as it were, not so floppy in the low lows. It seems to have tightened up like the low lows. I'm going to investigate. We're going to investigate. Let's investigate before we flip over to Jason himself explaining how he uses it. Okay, so let's go and grab an old fashioned uh, Paz. Remember the PAS frequency analyzers? Okay, so let's listen. So I'm going to put, we've got this um, in bypass. Let's put it in bypass and have a listen. Couldn't find my way home. So you can see I've got a I decent amount tired. of 30 or 40 going on before I use the God particle. Now let's turn on the God particle. Um, have a look there, you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's clear it and have a listen. Couldn't find my way home. Yeah, I'm right. So you've got a boost here. I was tired. At about 60. Let's see if you can remember that. So the differentiator between the 60 and the 40 is now greater. So he's not going in with this plugin and boosting some super low, low lows. Couldn't find my way home. It's a lot wider. Uh huh. So it's wider. So it's like a wider kind of EQ move going on down there. The interesting thing is, is if you look at it visually, it's like slightly wider, slightly a little bit more lows from the bass in there, a little tiny bit more of the 60 ish area on the kick that's being enhanced. Not massively different as far as like visually, but sonically enormous. Couldn't find my way home. Bypass, clear. I was tired. My mind won't leave me alone. Clear. Interesting. I was blind. I Didn't know how far I could fall. This is where graphs and all of that kind of stuff really does confuse the issue because the differences can be quite subtle looks wise, but sonically absolutely massive. Now there's a lot more mid range forward going on on this. But it's so much more noticeable in those high highs, and yet it's reading like barely any difference between in the high highs in the seven to 12K. And yet you can hear it, all this ah, and ambience comes up. Yeah, fun plugin. Like I say, Matt Lang, good friend of mine, very, very talented producer, engineer, and remixer and mixer. Um, loves it, absolutely loves it. When I said to him, What do you think of it? He's like, It's on my mix bus at the moment while he was working the other day. So I think that's a pretty good indication. But let us know what you think. If you've been using it, let us know down below. Now, let's check out what Jason himself has to say about this plugin. Over to you, Jason. So my good friend Warren asked me to give you guys some tricks, some picadillos, if you will, regarding this beautiful plugin called the God Particle. We're going to be listening or perusing through so you guys can listen to it on uh, Apple or Spotify or whatever platform of your choice to uh, the game, and the song is called One Time. So as you can see, 
the God particle is in uh, full effect. If you do not want anything coming from the God particle, just want to use the limiter, you can turn this bad boy all the way down and take the EQ out. And now you just have an, an amazing limiter and that could be one of your defaults. Um, obviously everyone knows I have it at 100%. I'm gonna take the vocals out right now so we can hear the track. I leave it at 100% and it's pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time set it and forget it. I'll show you some few changes that I uh, possibly do, but the key with uh, with this uh, beautiful machine is it was created to help the creatives get to a destination quicker and faster so they can stop thinking and just mix. One of these indicators is the input, probably the most important. Uh, you want to be hitting this indicator uh, continuously. If you are, then you're probably somewhere anywhere between, you know, minus 10 to minus One seven luffs. One time. One time. But it's also dependent. If you do not want to go that loud, obviously you can just trim it down with the input. But what that's also doing is it's taking, say for instance, you're hitting the, uh, the compression that the uh, God particle might be adding and it's too much to your liking. You can easily just take it down 2 dB over here. And then you come over to your limiter and you just raise it up 2 dB. So now you're at the same overall level, but you're not hitting the compression, you're not hitting your indicators if that's what you're looking for. But you go back to it where I had it, my original settings, and you see all the indicators being touched. And uh, I think this is a pretty good mix. Another great fun fact that uh, not many people know is over here with your indicators on what, what you're doing on a, on a band level, your high, your mids, and your lows, you can also come over here and it says the EQ session. I promise you, I try to turn it and uh, rename it to push pull, but we had to get this bad boy out and it would took way too, too much time just to get rid of this uh, text. So we stuck with EQ, but basically just look at these as just push-pull for each band. And if you're hitting the uh, mid-range a little bit too hard or the highs or the lows, which is very, very rare, it's mostly the mids, you take this down a dB and you'll hear your mix open up. Uh, I know it sounds uh, too easy, too good to be true, but it's that simple. And it goes for uh, both bands as well. The final thing to speak about is this wonderful limiter, like I said. This limiter, uh, I, I gotta one give the, 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 the team credit because I was really cracking on them for, for quite a bit on, on ascertaining the way where I can keep my transients, but keep the transients the way I like them through every genre of, of, of work that I do. And this uh, adaptive uh, limiter is, to me, for the price point, not even for the price point, but one of the better limiters on, on the market, and I'm extremely proud of it, just on its own. So once again, look at this little baby shine, and like I said, you can not have it, or you can have it all, and you can hear the difference just by turning the knob. I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Thank you, Warren, for having me. Hey folks, Matt Lang here, and I'm checking out The God Particle by Cradle Audio. Hey folks, Matt Lang here, and I'm checking out The God Particle by my good friends at Cradle Audio and Jason Joshua, who definitely doesn't need an introduction by any means. It's being touted as the mix bus processor to rule them all, and is it that good? Yeah, it really is. So really with this plugin, you're meant to mix into it, and I'm not going to bore you with me doing a full mix while mixing into this plugin. So what I did instead, I pulled up four actual mixes of my own, and I'm just going to show you how The God Particle works on each one. So let's dive in. So first up, I'm going to try this on a down-tempo electronic track. And here's the track. And there is no God on this. So we're disenchanted. La, 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 la. So let's enable the God particle now. And we'll slowly bring up the amount of God being used. I would presume that this is what the godly amount is, and I have it at zero. And also, as you can tell, there is a little three-band EQ here, and it's not an extreme EQ. It's not for surgery by any means, but it's for adding a little bit of color. 
and a little bit of flavor. There is an input control, so you can set your input level. There is a limiter, and it goes up to about 12 dB of limiter gain, which is a fair amount. It defaults to five, I'm bringing it to zero. The gain reduction uh, is clearly, there's a multi-band compressor going on underneath there, and these little uh, green boxes, I, uh, I believe are ranges uh, that recommend where it could, it could be hitting. Uh, I would imagine that's Jason's preference. Um, your mileage may vary and we'll all have our own individual preferences, but those I suppose are his preset preferences. And uh, lastly, there is an output and you can also, uh, you can scale the GUI, which is nice. You can make it massive like this. You can make it tiny like that. See, tiny God, big God. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go with, uh, you know, medium big God, pretty big God. Let's go with this guy. And I'm just going to play the track and I'm going to start adjusting the parameters and we'll hear how it sounds. So it does quite a lot, and it really does sound phenomenal. Um, you can hear that there's a lot of compression going on, and it's, it is multiband. It's definitely cleaning up, especially the mid-range, I find. But there's some nice stereo widening going on, so it really just makes all those little, like, clicky, uh, glitchy parts just pop out of the speakers that much more. Uh, let's keep going. I'm going to start playing with the limiter. So you can push the limiter pretty hard and it isn't breaking up too bad. Um, so that's fun. Let's just really abuse it and let's drive the input gain at the same time. And we're starting to get a bit of distortion there finally, but I mean, I'm gaining the thing up by 24 dB, so that's to be expected. So it sounds really good. It's not absolutely shredding the signal. And the EQs are nice. They add a little bit of color, but they don't push it. You know, you got some nice, like very shimmery, high end. It's very smooth. And let's go back to uh, when there is no God. No limiter, no God. The low is nice. The mid does exactly what you expect it to do. So it's very effective and it's very simple. Uh, they are definitely pretty cryptic about what's going on underneath the hood and I can understand why. Um, I personally wish I had a little more control and I could dive underneath there and really tweak it a bit more, but um, that's really not the purpose of this. It's really, you know, you're using Jason's preset and he's got some pretty well refined ears if I do say so myself. And it sounds really, really good. Um, truthfully, I've had this for a little while now and I've been using it on any mix that I've done uh, since I got it. So. Yeah, it just adds that little extra sparkle and just glues. It does do the gluey thing a little bit, but it just sounds really good and just makes everything a little bit larger than life. And I love what it does to the stereo field. Like that's really, really nice to me. So let's try this on a different style of track now. Um, this is on a rock mix, um, like a heavier rock mix. And once again, let's start with Zero God and we'll dial stuff in. Please punish me so I can feel whole again. 
Well, you can hear immediately, it's just making it bigger and it's also making it sound wider. Bring up the limiter. Bypass. And I'm going to bring the output gain down just so we can kind of level match uh, the difference between uh, no golden god, or I'm sorry, the presets, I am a golden god, but no god particle and god particle. Let's add it back. Like it really just makes it bigger and shimmerier and wider. I mean, it's, there's not a whole lot to talk about with what it's doing because it's pretty simple, but man, does it sound good. Like it really, really sounds good. Uh, let's try it on a more acoustic track. And uh, let's start with the default presets, which are, um, Factory default. I guess this is what Jason uh, starts with every time. So let's follow his lead. And we'll bypass it, then we'll enable it. To you I promise all I feel Here it goes. Burn the beast inside that weighs me down. So I learn your melody. Down the limiter. Hurts the demons hiding Without it. With it. Cast away. That sounds great. It's doing that same thing again. Uh, just making it a little bit bigger and a little bit wider and a little bit cleaner. And uh, this time you can see, I mean, I guess I mix a little bit dark apparently. I didn't realize that because I always liked my high end. But for the most part, I am not tickling the, uh, the high band meter at all there. So uh, out of curiosity, let's put an EQ um, before it and see what happens when I boost the high end there. To you I promise all I feel I'll burn the beast inside that weighs me down So I learn your melody and purge the demons hiding underground Without the EQ, lay me down again. Sing your whole quiet. Without the God. So it's interesting. That's definitely a brighter mix than I would have chosen, but it's an interesting reference point to have that. So maybe I would have ultimately. I don't know if that would have changed my mixing decision uh, when I did that mix originally. I'm not really sure. But. It's interesting nonetheless, and uh, I mean, everyone's mixing styles a little bit different, so you might find that uh, maybe you're cranking the highs. And either way, the compression in there is probably gonna tame them a little bit, and then you could always bring down the input gain if you wanted uh, to hit the meters uh, or hit the god particle a little bit less hard. And of course, you can drive the limiter really hard too if you wanna do that. And lastly, let's try it on a drum and bass track because once again, it's a very different style of track, it's a different style of mix, and I think the God Particle is gonna sound awesome on it. And let's bring the EQs down, the limiters down, and let's slowly fade in the God Particle. Between heaven and hell. Low end's already getting bigger. Bypass it. Yeah, it just makes it a little bit livelier and just bigger sounding. Interestingly, I'm hitting the, uh, the high end much harder on this one. Um, and it seems like the snare's really triggering it. So I wonder what the, uh, the frequency uh, cutoffs are for these three bands. 
I'd uh, be very curious to know. But um, yeah, I'd be very curious to know that. Let's try. Uh, let's try playing with the EQ a little bit. the limiter. Bring down the input. Take off the limiter, take off the input game. Let's bypass. Yeah, it just sounds better. I, mean, I wish I had this thing when I actually mixed the original track because, of course, if you're mixing through it, that's going to inform your mixing decisions. So it's interesting to uh, to put it on a finished mix versus a uh, using it in the process of actually mixing a track. So that all being said, yeah, the God Particle really is godly. Um, <laughs> it's a fantastic plugin, and it's not super CPU heavy. It sounds fantastic. It truly sounds fantastic. So, and it's pretty inexpensive too. It's like $119 or something like that. So probably, you know, one of the cheaper things you can put on your mix bus that sounds really good. And I highly encourage you to go check out The God Particle by Cradle Audio and Jason Joshua. Hi everybody, Adam Steele here. And it's time to look at The God Particle from my perspective. In Reaper, it works like a charm. It's beautiful. And it's replaced pretty much everything on my master bus. And that's really kind of surprising for me. The only things left on my master bus are this kind of tape stop effect, which you're going to hear in a second, and a bit of a mid and high bumpy cue, which I'll get to. So um, this is the, the new theme tune that I've been making for myself. Uh, you'll see this in the ultimate guitar video that's coming out very soon. But if I hit play, this sounds pretty good. Yeah, so that that's that tape stop plugin. So that's that wouldn't be on 99% of mixes, so I'm going to just say that's that's not even really there. And I've got this EQ that's doing a tiny little bump around 1k and a tiny little bump around 7k. And those are things that I've done to kind of feed into the uh, the God Particle plugin. I might even undo that and just push it slightly in the plugin here. So I was doing around 2 dB. Let's see if this sounds similar without that other plugin. That probably sounds better, honestly. And the way that I would look at a plugin like this is I shouldn't be having to use the EQ here, but because I started this mix uh, long before God Particle came into my life, uh, then I'm kind of making up for that as kind of revision. But in an ideal world, these would be flat and then the mix I would mix into this. But here's what happens when I turn this off. So when I turn it off, everything kind of sounds a little bit flat and lifeless. And yes, it does make things sound louder, which of course, flexion months and curve and all that kind of stuff, it does feel like louder is better. But um, without the limiter on, it's still, I mean, we'll have to adjust the volume here in the edit for you guys, but it's doing things that bring out certain niceness. My previous signal chain, if I just turn off the God Particle for a second, was a really complicated two-stage uh, limiter there. Then a lot of uh, valve saturation that was going on. And then a really complicated um, clipper at the end. And now I've turned all of those off. 
because I'm kind of getting a better result without. So here's here's my old signal chain. And here's the new one. So it seems like I was pushing the clipper really hard. So let's try and make these roughly the same volume. Here's before. There we go. So I could push that limiter harder to get more level out of it, but it sounds cleaner. It sounds kind of bigger in a really good way. And the I could go back to kind of using a hybrid of both, but I think the this God Particle plugin is going to live on my master bus a lot of the time now. Because the, the way the dials are kind of telling me, um, that's the reason I had this EQ earlier is that as I was playing with it, it was telling me I didn't have enough mids, I didn't have enough lows. And that caused me to go back into the mix and rethink things. Like I did something that Warren would usually do on the kick, where I took out uh, below 40 hertz-ish and then bumped 100 hertz. That's a very Warren thing to do. Kind of shifting the energy in the kick and getting the, the snare to sit better and getting myself more low end in the bass. And, and that kind of fed the God Particle plugin in such a way that it was happier with what I was giving it, which in turn means I am probably giving a more balanced mix. And so, yeah, the it's something that I've always done is I mix a little bit kind of scooped in the mids and I shouldn't. And so the fact that that's being pushed and I'm pushing the highs a bit because this is a rock track that doesn't have a shiny glistening top end. That makes a lot of sense to me that the, the mids and lows are now kind of lighting up as is the level correctly. The high isn't, but I'm not pushing too much high end into it to cause it to start reacting. So in this case, I think I'm okay with that. But the fact that I can do all this right here I'm going to back the limiter off because I don't need to slam like minus six RMS anymore. Um, this is, yeah, like I said, this is going to live on my master bus. Well impressed. Back to you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you ever so much, Jason, Matt Lang, and <clears throat> one more time. Thank you ever so much. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you, Jason, for your great presentation. Mr. Matt Lang, and of course, Adam Steele. Don't forget, you can win one of three copies. There is a link down below to win one of three copies of this lovely plugin. And of course, if you've been using it already, let us know what you think. Have you been mixing into it, or have you been doing a mix and then putting it on at the end? I'd be interested to see how it works for you. That's it.